Hello guys, good evening. You are welcome to my YouTube channel, The Explicit Tutorials. Please, as you are watching this video, endeavor to subscribe, like, share, and comment. If you know you haven't watched because we are discussing or I'm about running off final platform right now. If you know you haven't watched the video on uh, class monogenia, class tobelera, and class trematoda, and of course, the one that is based on their general features, I would advise you to do so to have a better understanding of what the topic is. Please, as you are watching, subscribe so that when I upload the new content, you'll be notified by YouTube so you'll not be lagging behind. So, in today's class, we shall be discussing classes to the before we look at the most commonly known member of this class, let's look at their general characteristics. Number one is that these guys, they are monoecious. They are monoecious. If I don't say they are monoecious, I'll say they are hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. If I don't say they are hermaphrodite, I'll say they are bisexual. For them to be called any of these, it means that they have both a male a, a female productive organ present in their body. Testes and ovaries are present in the same word of this. We call that what? Monoecious, hermaphrodite, or bisexual. Take note of that. Number three, take note that they have scolex. And this scolex comprises the head, hook, and soccer. All right? comprises head, hook, and what? Soccer, all right? Of course, this organism also possesses neck. Neck. At the, at the green region of the neck, or at the posterior region of the neck, the posterior region of the neck is called what? Green region. It's called green region because this posterior region, called uh, green region, has a segment called proglutids. 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 Now, the segments of proglutids that are very close to the neck are called immature proglutids. Immature waiting. Immature proglutids. While the, one, while the proglutids that are far from the posterior region of the neck, we call them mature proglutids. Proglutids, all right? Mature proglutids. Then at the, posterior of the, at the posterior region of the neck, where you have a, a fertilized egg, we call, we call it what? Gravid proglutid. Gravid Proglutid. It is inside the gravid proglutid we have the testes and the ovary. Okay, take note of that, please. It is inside the gravid proglutid that testes and ovaries are situated. All right, so please take note of that. And fertilized eggs are also found in this what gravid proglutid. So that is all about the segment or the or, yeah, this, this, the segment called proglutids, or otherwise called the grain region so of the neck. So number three, uh, their body is tape-like. Like normal tape, you know, right? Their body is what? Tape-like. And these organisms, they are all parasitic. None is free-living. They are all parasitic, okay? And their life cycle is direct. Their life cycle is what? Direct. The primary that is the they are mostly found in invertebrates, and these invertebrates, um, you, uh, you also have vertebrates. They are also found in vertebrates. All right, so please, the vertebrates in which these organisms are found, all right, the the, the vertebrate that these organisms are found are actually okay. How do I put it now? Mm. The vertebrate, of course, you have a man. Now, please, I cannot actually categorize generally. Let me say something. There are different species of cestos. We have the tenia, 
you have tenian solium. This tenian solium is found in pork meat. It's found in pork meat. All right. It's also found in snail. Good. The primary host is a snail. All right. Now you also have what is called te the tenia saginata. The tenia saginata is called cato worm. All right. This pork. This uh, tenia uh, solium is found in pork meat. While tenia saginata is found in cattle. Right. The parasite of pork. Is tenia solium, the past of uh, cattle is tenia saginata, right? This same tenia solium is also found in man. Is found in man. That, that, that is their adult stage is found in man, right? So that is for that. Apart from these three mentioned organisms, you also have another species called Diphi Lobotron. Latum. That, that is Diphilobotron latum is called what? Fish tape worm. It's called fish tape worm, alright? Fish tape worm, please take note. It's called what? Diphilobotron latum. Now, the adult stage of this worm, the adult stage of this worm is found in the intestine of man, dog, and cats. Alright, Diphlebotrum latum is the parasite of fish. The, the adult stage is found in man, dog, and what? Cat. While the immature stage is found in crustaceans such as crayfish, crab, uh, shrimp, and even prawn. Alright. So the, the immature stage is found in crustaceans. These are what you have them to be. While the mature stage is found in the intestine of man, dog and not cat. Another species of this, another species of cestoot is the Echinococcus. Echinococcus. Is there any of this? Another species of Sesto is a kind of a kind of cocos gra, granulosus. A kind of cocos granulosus. Please, the 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 infective stage of this of, of this one is called bladder worm. Bladder worm. All right, bladder worm. Please take note of that. Bladder worm is the infective stage of this. Of this uh, worm, this this one is also called a uh, hydatid worm. High hydatid worm. All right. It is mostly found in dogs. It is found in dogs. All right. So please take note of that. The infective stage of tenia solium, the infective stage of Echinococcus granulosus, is a bladder worm. Why the infective stage of tenia solium is the sister sister secos lava, all right? Sister sister look uh, sister secos lava is the infective stage of tenia solium and causes it is called cystic secosis, all right? That is cystic secosis, all right? Take note of that. The parasite of cattle is tenia saginata. The parasite of uh, pork is tenia solium. The parasite of fish is Diphilobotrum latum. The parasite of dogs, to be specific, is Hydati, is Echinococcus granulosus. There are different species of Echinococcus granulosus. We have Echinococcus. Uh, avula, uh, avulus, let me see what, Echinococcus avulus, we have Echinococcus uh, oligarthros, yeah. then we also have Echinococcus vogeli. Alright, so these are different species of 
Echinococcus. Echinococcus dandosus, Echinococcus albinus, Echinococcus legatus, Echinococcus jelly. But you only have this one on your textbook. So this is what you are focusing on, all right? So I've given us different species of cestodes, all right? So please take note of that. It is very important. Now, we are going to be looking at the, the most commonly known member. Please, the difference between the tenia solium and tenia saginata is that tenia solium possesses hook. But hook is absent in tenia saginata. Please take note of that. The tenia solium possesses hook, but hook is absent in tenia saginata. All right? So, the most commonly known member of cestodes is the tenia solium. Tenia solium. This S should be written in capital letter. And this is called the POC. The poker parasites. So that this, the, all organisms in this in class of Stoda are all parasitic. They are all parasitic. Okay. Now the adult form of tenia solium, I told you, is found in man. Is found in man. Excretion. These guys, they do not have digestive system. I initially told us that. Feeding is by now the hook possessed by this organism is for what attachment, isn't it? It's for attachment. While the sucker is used for what sucking, it's used to suck, it's used for sucking what a nutrient from its host. All right, nutrient from its host. Take note of that, it is very, very important. Now, please, it, it the Please, the proglottids. I told you that the growing region of the of the tapeworm are segments called proglottids, and they are situated on the posterior region of the neck. Now, uh, I was about to say something. I was about to say something. I was about to say something. Okay, I think before I run off the class, I should be able to remember it. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. I just remember now. What gives the tapeworm its large surface area for absorption? Please, it is the proglottids. Proglottids uh, contribute to the absorption of food molecules to large surface or area. Please, the tip, the flat surface. This, you know, these guys are also called flat worms. All right, so the flat surface of a body also does that. All right, it increases larger surface area for what absorption. Remember, these guys. They do not have dialysis tracts. They depend on their host for survival. They feed on their host, thereby causing adverse infections and of course pains. All right. Now that is based on what nutrition. Please, excretion. The excretion is by flame cell. Flame cell is used for what excretion, just as. The trematodes. The trematodes have the longitudinal trunk, which is lined with a scritchy tubule. Now, this scritchy tubule has two or three flame cells. The flame cells are used for excretion. Hope it's clear. Um, now, based on reproduction, based on reproduction, I told you the difference between. Tenia saginata and tenia solium is that tenia saginata lacks hooks, but tenia solium possesses hooks. Take note of that. Now, based on the production, I told you that the gravid proglutid is a mature type of proglutid where the testes and ovaries are what found. Now the eggs present in this gametoblotid develops into a larva called what? Now this lab, this embryo that the egg develops into is actually a six hooked embryo. Six hooked embryo, which means it possesses what? Six hooks. And this embryo is called what? Um, 
a second embryo. A second what? Embryo. A second embryo. Now, this gyroplobin contains this, this, and of course, fertilized. The fertilized egg develops into a second embryo. Now, this second embryo is some, it's also called what? Ladder worm. And it is what? Highly effective. If, if they don't give you options to be a second embryo, you will see you will see bladder one. Please, either of the two is very, very correct. Now the gyroplogotid once it is once it enters into the intestine of the organism, once it enters into the intestine of the organism, what happens? The the, the second embryo finds its way out of the wall of the cysts, all right, of the cysts. As long as it leaves the cysts, what happens? It is then it migrates to the tissue, blood, or lymph, vessel of what? The host. Fertilized egg, once the egg fertilizes, it produces, it, has, it develops into a cis-hooked embryo called what? A second embryo, which is still present in the proglutate. On the inside of the proglutate, as long as it enters into the intestine, it's it's bores from the proglutate into as it leaves or migrate the proglutate into tissue, blood or lymph vessel of the organism. Of course, as long as it enters into this part, it is then carried about the body into various parts of the body. That is, it is found in the, it, it goes, it migrates to the eye, brain. Skin, heart, and of course, it's found in the intestine. And sometimes it's also found in the bone, femur, the femur of the forelimb. Okay, is it for okay? The femur of the hind limb. So please, it is found in the eye, brain, skin, heart, intestine, and what bone. Alright. So as long as it gets to don't forget. Let me tell you, let me tell you this. It does not migrate directly into the blood. This is what happens. As soon as the egg develops into a second embryo. This, okay, the eggs when secreted. Now, the, the primary host in which it is found, when it's excretes, it passes through what feces. When animals uh, come in contact, when animals come in contact with the feces, what happens? It enters that is by ingestion, which means that this this uh, the eggs can actually uh, get in contact with vegetables. And I told you that the vegetable stage is called the second em embryo. Now, before this second embryo actually enters into this place, it means that it must have been ingested accidentally by man. For example, now once the egg develops into this, all right, it comes in contact with vegetables. When grazers feed on vegetables that contain this embryo, that is when it enters into the intestine. You see that? So from the intestine, it goes into this part, thereby causing lots of infections in the body. So please take note that the infective stage of the tip one is called what? A second embryo or bladder worm. And it's a cis hooked embryo. Cis hooked embryo, okay? So, I think at this point, we'll call it a day. Please take note of different species of cestops, all right? Their mode of production, their mode of feeding, excretion, and where they are found, it is very important. I told you that. The Fibotion latum is a parasite of fish, right? The immature stage is found in fishes and crustaceans, but the mature stage is found, or the adult stage is found in the intestine of man, uh, dog, and what, cat. So at this point, they'll ask you which of the following uh, causes hydatid disease? Which of the following causes hydatid disease? 
Hydatid disease is caused by a kinococcus granulosus, as I gave us before. Teniasis is caused by Tenia saginata. Please take note of that. So the infected stage of Tenia solium is called what? Cysticercus, and it causes cysticercosis. Hydatidosis. If I don't call it hydatid disease, I can call it hydatidosis or zoonotic disease. They are the same. I'm bringing all these terms in case AB goes out of their textbook. Hydatid disease is also called zoonotic disease. It's also called cysticercosis. All right. So thanks for watching. Do have a wonderful day. If you know you haven't subscribed, please do so to subscribe so that when I upload a new content, you'll be notified by YouTube. The next video is going to be on Phylum Arthropoda. Trust me, it's going to be very, very interesting. Do have a wonderful day.